We got a nice little 45 on that one, and then just a nice kind of straight piece on that. And as you can see, it's uglier than your mama. What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we are back on the Z28 Camaro, our 1978 second gen Camaro. I'll go ahead and give you guys a quick little recap of what we've gotten done so far. So Austin and I have been super busy at work. It's been really tough on schedules, but we've been chipping at it little by little as always. So you can see our wastegates are nice and fully welded on. We've got some pretty decent placement and uh, we're going to be fashioning our dump tubes for the wastegates now. So those will get done and then we'll move over to here and show you guys that we will be making our own recovery tank instead of trying to buy a cheapo one or a really expensive one. So got the material for free and we spent about 30, 40 bucks on all these little fittings and whatnot. So some nice little welding bungs. We got some uh, Teflon uh, hose fittings. We got little standoffs, quarter inch guys. So that'd be nice little stands to bolted to the radiator and then also a drain and these neat little vents so these are just your standard little i don't even know what these are called but you see them on rear ends quite a few times and uh like boost control solenoids and whatnot so we'll be definitely testing our aluminum welding skills which we haven't done a whole lot of haven't done a lot i mean we've done a little bit we did that we did that and the one down there and the one up there, but that's it. Not much, not much. So yeah, it'll be something like this right here. Let's give you guys a little visual. So it'll be off just a little bit, but I think that'd be a pretty cool idea just for us to actually kind of get more into the fabrication side of things. All right guys, so we got the tubes kind of cut up and mocked up. So it's that nice straight shot with the little extension that we got. And this one's just kind of like a 45 straight out so i've already checked it with the uh, full lock um, with the wheels to the left this does not come into contact at all we actually have about uh, a little bit less room about a, about an inch of room which is plenty plus these will be able to pivot or you know spin them however which way we need to but so one of them will be hidden that one will be pretty much hidden this one's got a little tail to it but We'll go ahead and weld these guys fully up before we trim anything just to make sure that, you know, I guess the material has better chance to uh, kind of cool off and whatnot while we're welding. So now we'll go ahead and get them tacked up, double check our fitment, and we'll go ahead and fully weld them up. I just screwed up. Literally just shattered our BBW. Oh man, that was so stupid of me. I just went a little bit too much on the uh, tightening there and just poof. Right, guys so as you just saw Austin and I were welding up some aluminum last night trying to learn and kind of practice on some things and ended up welding up our uh, recovery tank for our radiator system cooling system so before that I'm going to go ahead and show you our dump tubes for our waste gates are all done so we got these welded up the other night 
So we got a nice little 45 on that one, and then just a nice kind of straight piece on that. So as you can see from the bottom, you can barely see that one. And you can see this one just a little bit more. So we decided to keep this one a little bit longer just because the uh, uh, the Pittman arm is right there. So we didn't know if it was gonna heat it up, kind of make it a hassle to get off in the future if we ever have to get it off or not. All right guys, so here's our finalized product of our welding last night. So we went ahead and welded up our recovery tank for our cooling system. And as you can see, it's uglier than your mama. But you know what? It's going to hold some water and that's all that matters. And all we care about is that it's something else on the car that we've made and that we fabricated. So we're super stoked about that. So now we need to go ahead and get some holes drilled in this thing for our little kind of feed, I guess, little vent. And then we got a drain on the bottom. And then we also have two standoffs that we're going to have to weld onto the radiator and then have little tabs probably here and at the bottom over here. So those would be like that. Just have something to bolt to. So we'll go ahead and kind of figure out how all this is gonna line up and go ahead and start welding up. Alright guys, got the bungs all welded up. As you can see, this one, not so pretty. Ooh, it's getting hot, burning me through my glove. And then the top two actually came out a lot better. So I was kind of playing with the settings a little bit more. So at the bottom, it was probably about 85, 90 amps. And on these two right here, I turned it down to about 75. And uh, yeah, these came out way cleaner and they look way nicer. So good thing I started with the one on the bottom because this is the ugly side. So we got our, our little drain. We got these are two little vents in there right now. I just wanted to keep something in the hole so they didn't get so distorted. So we'll have to pull those out. And uh, yeah, so we got a nice little fill and a nice little vent. Forgot to show you guys that we actually got our drain all welded up. So we got our fitting welded in there. We got a nice little drain here. And right now it's just capped off. We're still trying to figure out what we're gonna do with it. Can't really put a 90 here and go through the floor. I mean, we could go through the floor, but Right here is where the body line kind of ends. So you have this tray right here and this is where all that stuff is in there. So it's gonna be kind of a kind of a tricky one. We were thinking honestly just keeping the cap on it and running a piece of rubber hose out to this one whenever we need to drain it. But I also don't know how often we're gonna have to drain that since we're gonna be running ice water. So I'm not sure if it's every pass. I see people ice them down every pass, but I don't know if they leave room. So if you guys know, comment down below and let us know uh, if we should put a hole in the floor to do that or just run a tube every time we need to drain it. I almost forgot to show you guys what my girlfriend got for my birthday. Can you see it? Look how freaking awesome that is. This thing is super sick. It's like, I don't even know, it's like 16 inch steel, but it's all laser cut. And it's just, I don't know, just badass. She's awesome and I love this thing. Well, here it is, you guys. This is the finished recovery tank. And as you can see, it's butt-ass ugly. No problem. But, uh, yeah. There's our drain. Made these two little tabs. And we got little standoffs. Now, these will actually weld to the radiator, which I have to pull out here next. And we'll get those welded on, and then we'll have it kind of sitting on the front side of it. So, there's our little vent and our little... I don't know if it's a fill or whatever you, you want to call it, but... These welds didn't come out too bad. I'm actually pretty pretty happy with the welds on these two bungs. The one on the bottom is kind of like my test piece. So I knew we could get it welded up. It's just, you know, how nicely were we going to be able to do it. But no worries. doesn't matter how it looks as long as it performs. So it'll sit something like this. So it'll be have a little bit of a standoff from the radiator. We'll probably put some type of pad or foam here so it doesn't rub it. And then... It'll mount up something like that. So that's the plan. So now we got to pull the radiator back off and uh, yeah, start welding on this guy. All right guys, it's all done. As you can see, we got our little standoffs welded up. Didn't do too bad of a job, I would say. Still learning, like I'm saying, all the time because you know what, we always are learning. So found some material to put in between it so it's never gonna rub or hit or anything. So, I mean, it's pretty solid. 
it ain't going anywhere. We got a nice little tube on there. And I don't know, guys, what do you think? I think it came out super clean. Um, definitely, you know, like I'm saying, not the best welds. I get that. But I think the execution and the idea came out pretty damn flawless. So I think this is a super neat idea for us to do, you know, just to get our feet wet with more fabricating. And also just kind of thinking outside the box, instead of buying something, we made it ourselves. All right, so next thing we're gonna be tackling is our steam port system. So we were going to be using this one with the uh, the factory little, little nipple that came off of it. But uh, when we were removing this around, it actually just came super loose and came off. So it's probably just braised in there just a little bit. So that changed our plans just slightly. So what we were going to do um, was use, one of these bungs, like you guys saw us using on the overflow tank yesterday, that guy, we were gonna put one right around here and then tie into it from wherever it came out over here all the way over to the radiator. But now what we're going to do is actually uh, drill and tap the old hole on the steam port and probably a hole in the uh, one of these lines right here, the fitting, and just run a nice short little uh, steam port line with our eighth inch MPT to dash four fittings. So I have a straight piece coming off of the uh, water neck right there and then we'll have this little 90 hopefully threaded into there or something like that. So that's the plan. I don't know if it's actually going to work or not. So we got our eighth inch MPT tap. It is a little bit long so we might have to trim this down a little bit just to make sure it's going to work. But we're going to go ahead and try to use what we have and if all, all else fails, we'll just probably get a new kit from either Motion or somebody else. So we're going to drill this hole out, tap it, and then run our line to a hole over here, which we have to get to drill. So we'll tap this guy and tap that guy, and we'll just have a nice little short uh, steam port um, tie-in back into the cooling system. That way we don't have to take the radiator back out and weld on it again. All right, as you can see, the first part was a success. So we had plenty of material to drill into and uh, tapped it pretty nice actually. So I was pretty kind of surprised, but luckily that worked out. So now you guys can see, so we're gonna run from that 90 over to this straight fitting. So I've already checked with the fuel regulator. Now that will sit probably about right there. So we'll be able to snake it down underneath with a 45 degree fitting here and then back to a 90 on this guy right here. So now we need to drill a hole into um, our water neck or inlet right here and go ahead and tap that. And then we should be able to make our line and everything should be nice and clean looking. All right, part two is all done. Got the second fitting into the uh, water inlet fitting or the outlet fitting, whatever you want to call it. So I had to put this off kind of at like a 45 degree because the charge pipe will be coming through this area and kind of sweeping up, hopefully into the intake, but we'll see. Because we don't have that yet, but we're gonna go ahead and press on. So we got the fitting installed. I had the uh, I had a vacuum on this guy, so I pulled all the shavings out and I had a towel stuffed in here that I grabbed with some mechanical fingers. So I ensured that there's no metal in here, so we're all good to go. And there you have it, guys. That is how you adapt your stock LS steam port, right? This is factory, to a uh, Dash 4 system, or really just to, you know, adapt it to a, a different water pump slash radiator or whatever you're doing. So little eighth inch MPT there, eighth inch MPT there, little Dash 4 Teflon. This is just what we had through some heat shrink. This is kind of some weird stuff. It's it's stainless underneath, but it's got this like protective, you know, nylon, how most of this comes, stuff like this, All right? So this is nylon wrapped, but it's also stainless underneath. So just got to trim that back a little bit, but I did put heat shield or heat shielding, heat wrap or heat shrink. Sorry, geez, can't even talk today. Heat shrink over that, just make it look kind of nice and not really factory looking, but just look nice. Cause I did the same thing for the turbo feed, but 
I forgot to put that on before I put the fittings on and use this cloth tape. Probably gonna pull these off and actually just do the same thing I did over there just because that looks super clean and I really like how that looks. But yeah, I think it came out pretty nice. I think, uh, I think our creative side is showing lately, you know, stuff like this. And then our catch tank, which is pretty dope. Nice. Yeah, hopefully it clears with the, uh, the fuel regulator bracket that we're getting from motion. So, let's see. Move this stuff. Grab this guy. So we got this, and I think it's gonna sit something like that. So yeah, that should be perfect. We should have no issues with any of that. I think honestly, the only thing we'll have issues with is the stock stuff here, but if we got to uh, make our own bracket or whatnot, then we'll go ahead and do that. But I mean, maybe it'll slip underneath. I don't know, we'll see. This isn't even the bracket, but yeah. Coming out good, guys. So unfortunately, you guys, our fuel pump got delayed another week. So we won't have it until next week. But that's gonna wrap up today's video. So we got the wastegates all welded in, we got our dump tubes done, we got a recovery tank all welded up, and we got our steam port adapted to our factory style uh, steam port. So just to recap, so we talked about this right here, just tap the old guy with the new fittings and it seemed to work out pretty well. So we've yet to test anything, so we'll see if anything leaks or whatnot, but I think it's gonna work no matter what. We got our nifty little recovery tank all welded up super ugly but you know what it's gonna work and also we got our waste gates all done up and ready to go so just little things that we're knocking off the list but those little things usually take quite a long time so hopefully we get our fuel pump next week and we can start on the entire fuel system minus the intake manifold so it should be pretty fun and uh, definitely stay tuned for that so thanks guys for watching thank you for subscribing and we'll see you in the next one